Hey YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel. Today, I have an exciting story to tell you. So we recently went shopping for a Kia Sportage. We had done our research, checked out the online prices, and we're all set to make our purchase. But let me tell you, things took an unexpected turn. Stay tuned. All right, so just recently on June 19th, we headed to a Kia dealership about two hours away from us. We decided to go there because they had a lot of inventory and their online prices seemed reasonable. We knew going into it that there was going to be a markup tag, taxes, and of course the dealer options that we're familiar with. We're, we're used to them being about $900 maybe. And sometimes you can wiggle your way out of them or ask for something else. Last time we did this, we ended up getting the equivalent of stuff from their shops. Seat covers and floor mats, uh, the back mat for the trunk. We just got all that stuff. So we settled for the Sportage because it's a little bit bigger than the Kia Soul. And we happen to like the Kia brand. Their automobiles are pretty good and they're usually pretty reasonable. We had our eyes on the base model Sportage. I'm not sure what it's called, the LX, the X, whatever, but the base trim, it's still very nice. Comes with windows tinted in the back. Pretty nice vehicle. The online listed price that we found there was about 27,000 and change. That is fairly average for what we've been seeing. We just went because they had the color we liked, uh, a dark gray. I won't say the price seemed reasonable because even that seemed pretty high knowing that we were probably going to be about 31,000, 32,000, somewhere like that, uh, all out. So we knew we were going to pay a little more than we wanted. We were hoping to pay about 30 grand all out. And we thought we could do that, you know, with negotiation. However, after we arrived, and we waited, talked to somebody, waited again, crunched the numbers, came back with this figure. We're like, oh, that's way too high. And we thought, of course, they were going to cut it down. They didn't cut it down. So it turned out to be $38,000. And I don't know what happened since the last three years since we've purchased the vehicle, but maybe it was the pandemic. Maybe it's a seller's market now. I'm not sure. But that is way too much money. I'm sorry, Kia, I love you, but that is way too much money for a base trim Kia Sportage. So that was about $11,000 in the wrong direction over what we drove down there for two hours away. This was in the Orlando area. I won't say where, Claremont. So besides the tag and the taxes and the normal fees, there was uh, market adjustment and the dealer installed options package. It's not optional, by the way. Let me break it down for you. A dealer market adjustment is when a dealership increases the price of a vehicle based on market demand or limited av availability. It's essentially a way for them to make more profit. As for dealer installed options, these are extra features or accessories that the dealership adds to the car often at an inflated price, extraordinarily inflated price. In our case, these options didn't offer much value or were items we didn't really need. For instance, they have a VIN number etching for anti-theft and recovery. Did you know you can get that for free if you go to most local sheriff's offices or police stations? Somewhere in your town or county, they're gonna offer it for free or very low cost. It's not a big deal. That's just one of the options. There's coatings on the fabric and the paint and there's a pinstripe on the car. That's kind of tacky, by the way. None of that stuff, it ended up being about 4,000 just for that those items that are supposed to extend the life of the car and the quality of the car and make it more anti-theft, more usable, more family friendly. It, it doesn't really help. It's something that they put very little money into, but get a lot of money out of, and you can't take it off. I'm just telling you, it's pure profit. And Kia doesn't see a dime of this. This is stays local, I guess. That's one good thing. So needless to say, I was, we were very disappointed and we felt taken advantage of. We felt, I don't know, we felt like they were circling us and they knew since we drove two hours away that we wouldn't just walk out 
Well, guess what? We walked out. I had been researching Teslas a while ago and I watched a lot of YouTube videos, Ryan Shaw and different uh, YouTube cr content creators who talk a lot about Tesla. And I had recently watched showing that their inventory stock, so not a custom order, but something they have kind of ready to go, brand new though, have been reduced, especially with the Model 3s, uh, because there's going to be a rumored refresh very soon. Uh, it's I, I don't know how much, but I think from like 4, 000, from 42,000, they went down to about 37 to 38,000. So a little bit of a savings. But if you're looking at a Kia Sportage, in my opinion, for 38,000 or a Tesla, I don't know. It's kind of a no brainer to me. So we saw that they had inventory available in the, Orla in the Orlando market, which we were about 15 minutes away from a showroom. Plus, there is also an enticing offer online for three free months if you buy before June 30th for uh, Tesla supercharging. So in case you didn't hear, which I'm sure everyone knows, Tesla has the biggest, the most advanced and user friendly car charging network across the world, not just in the US. I think there's over 10,000 or 12,000 supercharger stations or superchargers in, in the United States alone. Uh, they're so popular, other electric vehicle companies are switching over to utilize their product. They can't keep up with the Tesla supercharger. They're too efficient. For those who may not be familiar, a Tesla showroom is a physical location where you can see and experience Tesla vehicles. It's a place where you can ask questions, take a test drive and learn more about their cars and the features they offer. There's no dealerships in Tesla. You do it all yourself through the app. There's no negotiation. It's the price. There's no back and forth. There's no, there's none of that. You can literally reserve your car in 10 seconds. It's $250 down. It is not refundable. So you need to make sure you're in the game, but that goes towards your purchase. We were greeted with warmth and honesty by the Tesla representative in the Tesla showroom. They patiently answered all of our questions, addressed all our concerns, and explained the entire purchasing process. It was honestly refreshing to have such a transparent interaction regarding a new car purchase or finance. And I consider that to be genuine customer service. I didn't feel rushed, but it was a fast process. Like, it is unheard of. In the past, Going to the dealership, we were in there a minimum of five hours from when we pull up, pick what we want, sit down, crunch the numbers, have some water, have some coffee. Let's test drive this one. Are you sure you don't want to try this this one? You want all these packages? This is your price. Oh, you you won't take it for this unless it's okay. Let me go back and it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Not with Tesla. We were so impressed with the Tesla showroom, the customer service. We decided to reserve a Tesla Model 3 that was in stock right then and there. And guess what? It only took 20 minutes from when we walked in that door to when my wife on the on the on her phone on the app clicked reserved. And that's it. That one was locked until we finalize the process or we cancel or we're not approved or whatever. That was it. No pressure like, "Oh, someone can grab this from you." You can also do all this from your home. So unfortunately, when you do reserve a Tesla, it's not available same day because they have to, unless you go maybe early, but I'm pretty sure not, maybe the next day. So you need to plan that if you're gonna drive some distance. Make sure it's ready before you show up or you can stay in the area if it's not close to your home. Uh, but it makes sense, they have to make sure it's ready, inspect it, you know, test everything. Make sure your, financings are, your financing is good or your money is good. I don't mind that process, I'd rather do that two days, 20 minutes a pop versus one day of five hours or more. There was no hidden fees, just straightforward and efficient process. That's all it was. Fast forward two days later and we were there to pick up our new Model 3. Another two hour drive, but it was great. They even gave us more for our trade-in. The Kia dealership offered us 15,000 for our Kia Soul. Uh, they waited to find out how much we still owed on it too and then they gave us the price it was worth. They came in at $15,000. This, our, our Kia Soul was a brand, well, 2021 Kia Soul with about 30,000 miles or so. Tesla, unseen, didn't even look at the vehicle, offered us $17,600 for the same vehicle. And Tesla is not making a profit on that. I believe they just do it to help you out and they 
you know, sell it for maybe a little more to another dealer. Now the poor soul who buys that Kia from a used dealer, I'm sure they're gonna get not the same hospitality and honesty that Tesla gave us. And we couldn't be happier with our decision. So far, the Tesla Model 3 has been awesome. It is a learning process for us being ICE engine owners in the past, ICE vehicles, internal combustion engines. We still have one laying around the property, but it is, it's been awesome. It's just sleek, it's modern, it has way more technology and performance. It's eco-friendly. Plus, there's three fr free months of supercharging. Take that, Kia Sportage, or actually Kia dealership. The Sportage is fine, and Kia company is fine. Unfortunately, they're trapped with having to work with dealers. I don't get it. I'm sure it, everybody needs a job and everybody needs to make money, but still. So if you're in the market for a new car and you have to finance it, or unless you know somebody in the dealership, or maybe your local dealer is not as uh, predatory as the ones here in Central Florida, no offense to if you're a good dealer and good dealership, I'm not saying they're all like this, but at least so far our process, even working with other dealers in the area, driving through, seeing the online price, it's not transparent. It says click here to get pricing. You have to talk to somebody and all they want you to do is come in the building because they know they're more likely to snag and nab you and get you if you walk through that door versus on the phone or online. And that is, I don't know what else to say, but predatory in my opinion. It is not, it's not an enjoyable process. It makes you raise your voice. It makes you want to leave. It, it's, it's just, it's a hassle. So if you are in the market for a new car, we highly recommend Tesla. I do, my wife does. We're actually probably never going to finance another car through a traditional dealership unless things change in our area. Uh, the process with Tesla was too user-friendly, too straightforward. Like we, it, I still can't believe it. I, I, I'm not used to not getting a car. It was, sure it's expensive. It's more than we wanted to spend, but I think it's, there's value there. And the process alone makes me feel like spending more money. I don't know how to explain it. It's a seamless purchasing process. The worst case scenario is you're out $250, but most likely if you're getting that far into it, you already know your credit score, you know most likely you'll be approved or you have the financing already or the money already or your trade-in's worth a lot. I just think with their, I had, it's customer service and they are customer centric. Everything they make in the networks that they use, they're the only EVs that constantly update and there's always an update. Even when there's really not nothing to change, it's just, an, it, they're constantly improving. I'm beating a dead horse, but it's not dead because it's charged and it's not a horse, it's a Tesla. So anyway, that's how we ended up with a Tesla Model 3 when we were going to buy a Kia Sportage LX or LS, whatever the, the basic, it's a nice vehicle, but it's not worth to me what a Tesla vehicle is worth. No offense again to Kia brand international or USA. It's that dealership in particular and maybe all dealerships and other brands in our area. They think that they have a chokehold on you when you walk in that door, that there's no other options, but I think they need to change. They need to adapt quickly because the more people that catch wind of this process of transparency and customer service geared towards the customer, not only did we have that, we had answers also, quick quick in side note, we called Tesla probably four times on the way to get the Tesla because we weren't sure if we missed, we left our registration at home or like we were like, do we need all this? And they, every time we called and asked questions because it was just so out of our reality, the whole thing that we were making sure that when we got there, everything was gonna be seamless, and of course it was. But they every every four different people that answered the phone, uh, very quickly, by the way, even though they said wait times are pretty long, I think that's just to make you not expect that instant pickup. It was seconds, the minute they said that, the minute we called, about two minutes to get a person once you hit the little boop, boop, boop. And all four of those times on the way there, because of my, my neuroticness and you know questions uh, that my wife had, we were able to get those questions answered and no big, it, 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 I'm just amazed. The customer service is bar none better. And we also have Starlink. I mean, I don't know, are we a Tesla home? I guess so. Thank you, Tesla. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment down below. How was your process with your buying your car, uh, Tesla or not Tesla? Let me know. I, I don't think we're alone in this. I'm pretty sure this is like an epidemic. 
And it's been doing, you know, this has been going on for years, but there's no more of this back and forth. It's like, we got you. And they think they do, but they don't. They did call us, by the way, uh, after we already bought our Tesla, but before we picked it up. So we got all our financing, everything approved, everything was ready. We got a better trade-in deal with our, pre our previous car, uh, a Kia car that the Kia dealership wanted to pay us less for. Anyway, we got a call from the Kia dealership saying, hey, are you still able to come back? You know, I'm pretty sure we can help you. Blah, blah, blah. Why can't you come back? Oh, you've got another vehicle. Do you mind me asking what? And we told them a Tesla. And they said, well, how come? And we explained the process. We said, hey, we walked in there for this price. We were expecting a little bit of a gouge, but we got this much and the, per the people wouldn't budge from that. And they offered us this much, uh, actually way less in my opinion than Tesla did for our trade-in. It was a no brainer. So sorry, we lost our business and our future business too. But again, thank you for watching. And as always drive safe, join the EV revolution. Whether you think it's green or not, it's still pretty, it's pretty neat to have a car. I mean, it's so interactive. Anyway, just stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing more videos with our new Tesla Model 3. We are going camping soon. Uh, we're gonna try that out. I'm a little big, I think, for it. But I lay down in the passenger seat um, and it's quite roomy when you lean all the way back. But you can lay the back seats down and there's an inflatable mattress that we're ordering. You can put it back there, your feet are in the trunk part, but it's, there's enough room. It's like if you, you're on a twin bed each side, like almost a full bed back there. And we're excited to try the camp mode. It keeps the climate, whatever you set it at. It only loses about what, one to 2% of battery per hour when you're in that mode. Uh, that's not bad when you think about it. You've got your AC and plus we're going to a campsite so we can plug it in. So we're not really gonna lose power. Anyway, thank you again. I'm redundant right now. This whole process has been awesome, minus the traditional dealership part of it, but it was very eye-opening. And again, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, comment down below your comments about this topic. I'm, I know a lot of people have a lot to say. Maybe you can prove me wrong, but I think from now on, we are definitely a Tesla when we finance a car. Maybe we'll find a good used car somewhere and we can make a deal. But as far as f for future financing, if, unless if, maybe even sales, if I have that much money one day, I think I'm gonna stick around with Tesla. I do still have my Cybertruck reservation and I'm not giving that up. I might not be there for a while cause I'm not, you know, right up in front, but I'm really excited for that too. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you can go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to see more. Bye.